Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt, and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from Acts. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city." They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing 
and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Revelation. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the night to the tree of life and may enter the city of the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with his testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. 
and let everyone who is thirsty come, and let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things say, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Next week, and obviously we're not looking forward to it, but next week 
we have to say goodbye to Gray and Kate. Two years have gone quickly. More quickly, I think, because of the odd circumstances of COVID. But the time has come for Gray to make his first choice about where to exercise his ministry, and we have to say goodbye. We don't want to say goodbye. And really, goodbye isn't quite the right thing to say. Gray will always be a part of our family, and so much better to say farewell. Farewell offers all our best wishes, which come from the bottom of our hearts. We want Gray and Katie to be happy, successful, and useful to the kingdom of God. And farewell expresses that far better than goodbye. Which is why, of course, this chapter of John's Gospel, as Jesus is about to be arrested and forcibly parted from his followers, is called the farewell discourse, not the goodbye discourse. Jesus, too, wants the best for his disciples, for his friends. Now, I'm not saying I know better than the evangelist, but it's sort of a shame that this section is written in John's fanciest, most flowery language. It's really quite exquisite in Greek, but it can be hard to make out in the English version we have this morning. There's a lot of I and you and me and him and we and him. The core of it can get a little lost. Still, once you've read it about 25 times, it's clear enough. <laughs> Jesus is saying, as he says farewell, he is saying, my friends, we have had it good for a time. We have worked together, worshipped together, and prayed together. We have come to truly care for one another. We are united. United by love. And then Jesus goes on, really not to say, but to pray, that the disciples and those who follow after can keep it up. Keep it going. Jesus prays that the love and unity of the emerging church will be the force that reveals to the rest of the world the glory of God. Jesus prays that the church's love and unity will be how the world sees the glory of God. That is Jesus' hope and his prayer as he is parted from his friends. And I'm thinking our Lord must be disappointed. Divisions in the church started early, of course, and we have never been free of disunity. It's in 1054 that the Eastern and Western churches broke apart, the largest split in history. It's in the 16th century that the Protestants broke once and for all away from the Roman Catholic Church. And it's true today that the multitude of denominations are each and all divided within themselves. Fiercely divided. The idea of anything like real unity seems pretty remote. Probably impossible, actually. In a context where not even compromise seems to stand a chance. And it strikes me that the epic fall of that word is pretty telling. Compromised 
not long ago was a verb, a good solid verb with a good reputation. Andy wanted to play hide and seek, and he wanted to play football, but they compromised and played free sag instead. In today's world, compromised is an adjective and a nasty one at that. Claudia used to be so reliable, 100% on board with us, and now she's compromised. That shade of meaning of the word used to apply only to pathology. It was a word of diagnosis. Sadly, Bill's immune system is compromise. But the pathology has spilled over and is becoming the norm in our world. So do I think there will be any real and grand beacon of the love and unity that Jesus prayed for, so that the world might see in his church the glory of God? No, I do not. And I am wondering truthfully if maybe Jesus ought to have prayed for something else instead. I'm not sure I have the courage to suggest what the Lord of heaven and earth should have done as an alternative. And I'm not sure I would change it anyway. Because it has me thinking. Say, next Sunday was my last Sunday. It's not. You're not getting rid of me that easily or anytime soon. But what if it was? What if I was giving my farewell discourse to you this morning? What would I say? I know what I'd say. I'd say, my friends, we have had it good for a time. We have worked together, worshipped together, and prayed together. We have come to truly care for one another. We are united. United by love. And I pray that in my absence, you would keep it up. Keep it going so that your love and unity might reveal nothing less than the glory of God. I'm not saying farewell next week, but obviously I will say farewell someday to you, my friend. Is there a chance that the something truly special, truly remarkable that we have built here can last? The track record of success generally for Christ's plea for unity is not encouraging. Not encouraging, to say the least. But is there hope? Is there hope that you can still, in today's world, start with worship? Faithful worship of the true God. And in worship, can you still build community? A community marked out not by agreement or homogeny, but built on a shared vision of a loving God. And then can that community continue to make every effort to love one another, emulate the self-giving, sacrificial love that Christ has for us to the best of our abilities? Is that still possible? Is there hope that unity anywhere 
among Jesus' disciples can still reveal God's glory. I don't know if it's likely, but I do know that it is possible, and I will tell you why. Listen to the beginning of Jesus' prayer this morning in the original words of St. John the Evangelist. Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. It's not that often that we ourselves show up in the text of Scripture. But there we are, my friends, clear as daylight. Jesus is speaking to us, right here and right now. And more than that, if Jesus is still speaking these words to us, then he is also still praying his prayer for us. Jesus is still hoping, still praying, that those people whom he has called to be friends might continue to live together in love and in unity. Will it happen? Over time, will the unity of Christ-like love continue at San Jose, or anywhere for that matter, in all of Christendom. I don't really know. But I do know what I'm going to do. I am going to pray with Jesus. Today, tomorrow, Until one day I say farewell. Gracious God, you have shown us that the ultimate expression of love is in sacrifice. We thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we lift in prayer all of the expressions of sacrifice that show us the depth of true and godly love. 
For the sacrifices of parents to their children, we thank you. Stir up in us the power to love in our own families with the high calling to which you have commanded us. For the sacrifices of true friends toward one another, we thank you. Raise in us the power to befriend others with the depth of love with which Jesus loved his disciples. For the sacrifices of the fortunate to the poor, we thank you. Encourage all of us to share more and more of our blessings, to care for more and more of our kingdom, of your kingdom. For the sacrifices of all who serve the church, raise each of us to our own ministry in this place and strengthen us to participate in San Jose's mission and ministry. And most especially on this day, for the ultimate sacrifice of the men and women of the armed forces who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom. Give us grateful hearts and strengthen us to fight for freedom in our own time and in our own ways. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Morning. morning. Good to see you. Joke of the day, Back Row Comedy Club, which is more in the front row today, Skylar. Um, all right, why did one fish slap the other fish to try to snap her out of it? <laughs> there, we there we go. There we go. Snapper is the best eating fish, in my opinion, in all the world. Um, lots of stuff going on. I'm going to try to go sort of chronological. Um, I'm thinking the world could use more kindness. Do you, I mean, you, you agree with me the world could use a little more kindness? Uh, so our parish nurse, Jan, today is going to be uh, leading a project uh, painting kindness rocks. 
Um, it's a small thing, but it is in fact the small things that make changes in our world. Uh, and so those kindness rocks are then prepared to give as an, uh, as an act and as a token of kindness. And if you want to help kindness, paint kindness rocks, uh, we're going to do that directly after church, right Jan? Is that right? Uh, in the lounge. So hang around and bring your paintbrush. You do not have to be that skilled. Uh, we're not looking for Rembrandt here. We're just painting rocks. Uh, so you would be more than welcome to join us for that as well. Next Sunday, next Sunday is the Feast of Pentecost, which is, which is a good news, bad news day for us. It, it is the day that we say goodbye to Gray and Katie and their wonderful ministry here with us, but it is also the celebration of the beginning of Christ's church and the day of Pentecost and all of the uh, incredible things that that implies. So on the Feast of Pentecost, generally we wear different shades of red that day. So if you've got uh, some red somewhere, wear it to church that day. It's kind of fun to look out at the congregation and we kind of look like the sea of flames that were the distinctive mark of the Feast of Pentecost. And we're also having a picnic, as we often do for the Feast of Pentecost. And so we're going to provide the fried chicken and dessert. If you could bring some sides, that would be great. Um, and, and we're going to find shady places and a couple of indoor places. We're going we're to do it down on this side of campus uh, this year. We do pen, pe, pe, picnics all over the place, but that's where we're going to do this one. So uh, following our picnic, or maybe sort of as our picnic concludes, we're also having a Family Olympics Day, uh, which is, which is going to be fun as our young families and anybody who wants to join them uh, compete in terrific activities, old-fashioned type activities. Uh, with pom-poms and cheerleaders and prizes and the whole bit. So uh, please join us for the picnic and for the great Family Olympics Day that will follow that as well. It's been a long time since we've been able to do that sort of thing, and we are working our way back to a normal that feels pretty good. So we ask you to do with that with us as well. Uh, please, in, in your prayers, um, uh, the youth mission trip is coming up, and on the Back table, on the back table on my right side, uh, Caroline's printed a couple of cards for you that have uh, messages from our two young adult volunteers who are going to be helping to chaperone our trip. And then on the back of those are the participants of our youth mission trip. They're going to Colorado, and they are going to do good things for people, and nothing brings a group together quite like uh, helping others out. And so uh, they are off, and they will have a good time, but we want to keep them in our prayers as they go. And so it, please grab these cards and put them on your refrigerator and read the really exceptional messages that our young adult volunteers, two great kids, Sarah and Emma, have written, and also keep them in your prayers as well. Keep attention to the e-news for all the things that are going on. Just because it's summer and we slow down a little doesn't mean there's nothing going on. There's always something going on in this parish, and there's always something going on for you to participate in. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. 
trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.